Groom's ex crashed our wedding, so I left him at the altar. Now his parents want to buy me a house for Fix's mistake, but he demands I give it to him since he's homeless. Hi, so I was supposed to get married last month but that ended up not happening because my ex fiance Scott is an idiot. And now he's driving me crazy because his parents want to buy me a house to compensate for his idiotic behavior and he thinks that I shouldn't accept it. I don't understand what to do now. For context, Scott and I are both 25. We met in college and have been together since graduation. He didn't ask me out before even though we had a back and forth flirtation thing going on ever since we became friends in our second semester. However, after we graduated, he finally worked up the courage to ask me out and I said yes. After dating for a couple of years, he proposed to me last year and I said yes. He and I have had a perfect relationship and I didn't think anything could possibly go wrong but man, was I wrong. Before me, Scott had been with only one other woman and that was his childhood sweetheart, let's call her Caroline. I had never personally met her but I had seen a couple of photos of her from his high school yearbooks. They had been voted best couple when they graduated and it made sense because they had been together since middle school. He never spoke about her but I did get to know from a couple of his friends that they had been inseparable while they were growing up. They had been best friends when they were in elementary school, which turned into a relationship by middle school, and by the time they were in high school, they were actually planning to get married. Unfortunately, it didn't work for them because Caroline's father wanted her to go to business school in New York which was really far away. They tried to make things work and continue the long distance relationship but they couldn't and it led to a lot of fighting. So they broke up a few months after college started. I didn't know about any of this until much later because Scott introduced me to his school friends after we had already been together for three months. I did find it weird that he hadn't mentioned anything about Caroline when we first started dating because it felt like a pretty significant thing to skip telling me since they had been together for so long and even had plans to get married after college. Also, the fact that they had broken up in the first year of college and by then, Scott and I were already friends and did have a bit of a cute little flirtatious thing going on. I had no idea he was struggling with a breakup at the time. Even after we started dating, he didn't tell me anything about Caroline. And since he had deleted all photos of her from his social media, I couldn't find out about her myself either while I was stalking him before we started dating. I don't think his school friends would have mentioned Caroline either but one of them slipped up. The day I learned about her had also been the day of our first big fight as a couple so I remember it quite clearly, obviously. It had been his birthday and he had invited all his school friends over so he could introduce me to them and we could have dinner together. I had already met his family and since we were in college together, I knew that group of friends as well. These were the only people who didn't know me so we hosted a special dinner on the day of his birthday for them to get to know me but it was actually I who got to know Scott better that day. While we had been talking after dinner Scott left the room to attend a call from a relative since his friends were making a lot of noise to mess with him, just like guys do. Once he was outside, one of his friends mentioned that he was pleased to see that he and I were so happy together because he genuinely hadn't expected Scott to ever be able to move on from Caroline. I had been caught off guard when he said that because at the time, I had no idea who she was and they realized that immediately after I made a face and asked who that was. They tried to brush it off but the cat was already out of the bag and I pushed them to tell me who they had been talking about. So they were forced to tell me about Caroline and her history with Scott. They probably knew that they had messed up and tried to cover it up by making it seem like no big deal but as soon as I heard that Caroline and Scott had been together since middle school and had plans to go to college together, I knew that this was a big deal and I had to confront Scott about it after his friends left. Everyone had sobered up by the time Scott came back to the room and cleared out quickly afterward. Once everyone was gone, I decided to bring Caroline up and ask Scott why was this the first that I heard about her because it seemed to me like he was trying to cover up a very important part of his life and hide it from me. I could tell at the time that he was very uncomfortable talking about this because he kept saying that it was no big deal and tried to downplay the significance of that relationship. He tried to convince me that Caroline had meant nothing to him and that it had just been a stupid high school relationship, which he had completely moved on from. But I didn't buy it because I was hurt that he hadn't told me anything about this woman. I insisted that he tell me everything because it was important for me to know but he didn't think that Caroline had anything to do with our relationship and refused to talk about her. When I kept pushing him, he snapped at me and told me to mind my own business. So that led to our first big fight and I ended up spending the night at a friend's place because he had been simply horrible that day. He had told me that it wasn't his job to make me feel less insecure, especially when it came to a past relationship that he didn't even want to discuss. He completely glossed over the fact that he had kept this a secret from me for no real reason and made it all about me and my issues, saying that I was getting insecure over a past relationship from high school and it showed that I had a lack of trust in this relationship so it was insulting to him. He somehow convinced me that I was getting upset for no reason and that the only reason he hadn't told me about Caroline was because he knew that I would react exactly the way that I did and get upset because he had been with her for a long time. But I would refuse to believe him if he said that it didn't mean anything to him anymore and kept feeling jealous and insecure about her. He played it quite cleverly and a few days after the fight, I started to think that I had probably made a bigger deal out of it than what was necessary and blown it all out of proportion. So I apologized to him and he forgave me as long as I promised him that I wouldn't bring Caroline up again. 
He told me that the reason he didn't want to talk about her was because she was really clingy and annoying and it was embarrassing for him to talk about her because it just reminded him that he had wasted so many years of his life with her. And he didn't want to waste more time talking about her when he was with me now. So I promised him that I wouldn't bring her up again and we decided to move on from that fight. I did meet his school friends several times after that and Caroline only ever came up once because I guess he had probably instructed them all not to talk about her around me ever again. The last time that I heard about her was just a couple of weeks after the fight and I had run into the friend who had mentioned Caroline the first time that we met at the grocery store. He told me that Scott had told them about the fight that we had and he felt like he needed to apologize for it because it wasn't his place to say anything about his relationships, past or present. And he felt bad for causing a fight between us. He told me that I had nothing to worry about, especially if it was about Caroline. Irrespective of the length of their relationship, he had never seen Scott as happy with her as he had been with me. He probably said it in order to do damage control but I bought it and it made me feel really happy because this meant that whatever Scott had said about him having completely moved on from Caroline was true and the reason he was so secretive when it came to her was actually because of what he had stated and not because he was still in love with her or whatever. And that was pretty much the last time anybody ever brought Caroline up. His family knew better than to talk about her around me and his friends had learned their lesson, so I never heard about her again and a few months later, I had forgotten about that episode entirely. We went on with our lives afterwards and things were simply great between us. We did have a few ups and downs like every other couple but it was nothing out of the ordinary and I didn't have any second thoughts about marrying him. But I guess I should have because our marriage ended up not taking place because of Caroline, ironically. So I guess I should have taken her more seriously instead of being overly confident in the strength of our relationship. Things had been great even up until the morning of the wedding and Scott had been as happy as I had ever seen him. There was literally no way that I, or literally anyone, could have predicted what was about to happen. I had even walked down the aisle and he was about to say his vows when any bride's worst nightmare happened. Caroline came running through the entrance and demanded that we stop the ceremony and that she couldn't let this take place, especially when she knew that Scott was her soulmate. I knew what Caroline looked like, I had seen her before in the yearbook photos and I had wished that I would never have to see her in real life because I couldn't imagine any happy circumstances that would lead to us meeting. I was in shock and I froze up there at the altar, as did Scott and everyone else who was present there. We didn't have any security measures in place because this was supposed to be a really private and intimate ceremony and there were really not many guests who knew about this anyway, so hiring a security team didn't seem like a priority. We were also having this ceremony on Scott's uncle's property which wasn't open to the public and most people didn't know about it. I regretted all of that later, once I realized that the wedding wasn't going to happen. But while I was standing there at the altar and waiting for someone to say something, the only thing that I could think of was that Scott was obviously going to kick her out and he wouldn't entertain this because in the past, he had made it very clear that he didn't like her. So you guys can probably imagine how horrified I was when instead of telling her to get out, Scott actually started talking to her about how she had managed to find us because we hadn't exactly publicized the details of our wedding. He seemed to have forgotten about the vows altogether and was just having a conversation with her while everybody looked confused. The two of them completely ignored me and she started confessing her love to him at our wedding. She told him that she had found out about the wedding because she had still been in touch with a couple of his friends from school and they had just casually mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. She told Scott that she hadn't ever stopped loving him but she didn't come back all those years because their breakup had been really bitter and she had been waiting for him to come around. When she heard that he had started dating me, she thought she was going to give up on him but after she learned that we were about to get married, she realized that she couldn't let this happen because then she would regret it for the rest of her life. The only reason she had even been late to the ceremony was because of the traffic and she had actually intended on reaching about an hour before the ceremony was about to begin and talk to him in person. But that hadn't been possible and so she had to interrupt the wedding after it had already started. She told him that she loved him and always had and now it was up to him if he wanted to work things out with her but if he was sure about me then she would leave the ceremony and we could all pretend like this never happened. This discussion had been happening right in front of me. And strangely enough, since he was actually entertaining it, nobody knew whether to kick her out or just to let them talk. When Caroline said that she would leave if Scott was sure about me, I thought that he was finally going to tell her to go away because the opportunity to do so was right there and I was actually willing to forgive him even up until that point. But instead of saying that he was sure of me and was going to go ahead with the wedding, he started arguing with her instead of just doing the normal thing. He told her that she had been unfair to him by attending a different college and breaking up with him because that had never been part of the plan and now she was here confusing him, just because she hadn't been able to make up her own mind. He accused her of being selfish and never thinking about his feelings and Caroline apologized for it and tried to tell him that she would change. By then, almost 10 minutes had passed since she interrupted the ceremony and I had come back to my senses. They were having a full-blown conversation about the past and I realized that this was turning into all about them. I was nothing but a supporting character by that point. I felt incredibly hurt that Scott was entertaining this conversation instead of just showing her out and all eyes were on them now. Even my parents and my bridesmaids were frozen to their spots because they didn't know what to do and I can't even blame them for it because everything that was happening was just so strange. 
I couldn't take it anymore so I decided to walk away instead because it had become increasingly clear to me that no matter what Scott said, he still did have some feelings for Caroline and had been playing me like a fool all along. Even as I started walking away from the altar, he didn't try to stop me and only said that he would get back to me when he had dealt with the situation at hand and that I could go wait in my hotel room until he had sorted things out here. Once I was inside my room I completely broke down because it was insane to me that instead of kicking her out of the venue, Scott was actually trying to talk to her and making it all worse than it already was. My wedding day was supposed to be the happiest day of my life but because of Scott and Caroline, it turned into a complete nightmare, something straight out of a badly made rom-com. And as it turns out, I was not the leading character here, I was the idiot who gets dumped on her wedding day because the guy is still in love with his ex but I had been too blind and stupid to realize it earlier. While I was having a breakdown in my room my parents and my bridesmaids came by a little later, maybe 15 minutes after I left, and told me that they had left the venue because Scott and Caroline were still talking and had excused themselves to have a private conversation before they returned to the ceremony. I couldn't believe it and started crying again because at that point, there was just no hope and I knew that I wasn't going to get married that day. My parents told me that they had told all the guests from our side of the family to go home and then come up to my room because they didn't think that the wedding was going to happen. They suggested that they take me home with them because this was quite insulting for everyone and I said yes to that. So instead of waiting for Scott to be done with his conversation with Caroline and finally come to talk to me, I decided to go back home with my parents. My bridesmaids very graciously offered to take care of the situation with the guests so that I could deal with this on my own and within an hour, I had packed up my things and was heading back home with my parents. I kept crying throughout the car ride while my mother tried to comfort me but even then, some small part of me was hoping that maybe Scott would call me and ask me to come back or he would beg me for forgiveness and then we could still get married because I refused to believe that this was happening to me right now. However, he didn't try to reach out to me until the evening and that was only to explain to me that he had decided not to get married or to get back with Caroline. Because he felt like neither of those options were suitable for him right now and he needed to be alone for a while so he could sort out how he felt about both of us inside his own head before he came to a conclusion. So all of that had been for nothing, eventually. In the text, he told me that he had been talking to Caroline for a really long time and they had discussed everything that had been left unsaid during their breakup. In doing so, he realized that maybe he hadn't completely moved on from her which is why it had been so difficult for him to talk about her but now he couldn't run away from his feelings anymore. And he didn't think that it was fair to me, so he was breaking things off with both of us until he was clear about what he felt. He mentioned that his parents were going to take care of all the expenses so I didn't have to worry about any of it and then he said that he was terribly sorry for whatever had happened and for ruining what was supposed to be a beautiful day. He said that he hoped that I could forgive him someday but until then, he felt that we should take some time apart. When I read that text, I swear I started crying so hard that I almost threw up because I was devastated. I actually felt physically ill for the next couple of days and couldn't even go back to my house so I had to stay with my parents while they nursed me back to health. Scott's parents handled everything and were actually pretty nice to me because they reached out to me a few days after the day of the wedding and apologized to me for what their son had done. They told me that they were really ashamed of everything that had happened and were willing to do whatever it took to make it up to me. But I couldn't ask anything of them because this wasn't their fault. They were really decent people and Scott's behavior was all about him, they had nothing to do with that. So that was it and once the wedding vendors had been paid off, I decided to take a break and just sort of process everything that had happened. Because it's not every day that you spend months planning a wedding with a man that you love, only to have it ruined by his ex-girlfriend. I can joke about it now because it's been almost a month and I have been talking about this in therapy and trying to work out my feelings. But it still hurts. I have no idea what Scott had been up to because I had deactivated all my socials and blocked him from everywhere after I had replied to his text and told him that I was making it easier for him to decide between me and Caroline by removing myself from the equation and now, he didn't have to choose anymore. After sending that message, I blocked him and he didn't try to reach out to me after that. However, a few weeks ago his parents paid me a visit and told me that they had come into a lot of money because his dad had just made CEO, and that came with a significant pay raise. So now they wanted to buy me a place of my own, which they had been planning to do anyway. It was originally supposed to be a wedding gift for me and Scott but now it was going to be a gift to me to make up for whatever had happened. I have been living with my parents ever since the day of the wedding because the house that I used to live in earlier was one that Scott and I had leased out together and I was afraid that if I went back, then I would run into him and I didn't want that. My bridesmaids had been the ones to pack all my things and bring them back home for me a week after the day of the wedding. And they had told me that the house had been completely empty when they showed up there, so they knew that Scott hadn't been around and had left with his things before me. I had spoken to the landlord and he had also confirmed that Scott had backed out of the arrangement and now I was his only tenant, so I told him about whatever had happened and said that I wouldn't be coming back because it was just really difficult for me to return to our home. And I couldn't move back for practical reasons as well, the rent would be too high for me to pay by myself. So right now I have nowhere else to go and I also know that I can't live with my parents indefinitely. And if his parents were nice enough to offer then I don't see any reason for me to reject it. 
But Scott found out about this somehow and has since started hounding me from different phone numbers to try and pressure me into rejecting them because he is apparently homeless now and has been living in his car for the past few weeks. He believes that he is entitled to the house and that I should tell his parents no so that they approach him instead. He hasn't explained anything to me like how he ended up homeless and living in his car or why he isn't on speaking terms with his parents anymore and claims that it's none of my business. But he keeps saying that I can't accept the offer because he needs a house more than me right now and it would be really selfish of me to say yes. I really want a place of my own and I don't think that there is anything wrong with me accepting his parents' offer. Wibta if I let my ex-fiancé's parents buy me a house while he's homeless? Update 1. Okay, so I told Scott that I wasn't going to give him the benefit of the doubt unless he told me the truth about how he ended up homeless. And he finally confesses to me that after the day of the wedding, he decided to resign from his job and go off for some soul searching. He didn't even wait for the two weeks and just took off. He ended up spending a week in the Japanese islands and blew through a lot of his money. He didn't keep in touch with anyone for that one week, not even his parents. He had been expecting his parents to help him out by letting him live with them when he came back but they were obviously really angry because he had disappeared without a word and hadn't even bothered to give them an explanation. But now he expected them to help him out just because he was back. So they got into a big fight and he told them that he didn't need their help but he soon realized that he had no place to go since he had ended his lease for our old place and he couldn't count on his parents. He could get a new apartment but that would take some time and he didn't have a stable income right now so he also had to look for jobs. He couldn't live with any of his friends either because he had fought with them as well after the day of the wedding, for being loose-lipped around Caroline and telling her about the details of the wedding and none of them were talking to him anymore. So he had no one at the moment but, thankfully he heard about his parents' offer to me from his father's realtor. That guy didn't know about the wedding falling through and had contacted him to ask what kind of house he was looking for because he had assumed that when Scott's father told him to start preparing a list of potential properties, he was probably referring to the wedding gift that they had discussed earlier. And so he had reached out to Scott, which is how he found out that his father was buying a house and he knew that it was for me because his father had told his realtor to look for places near my workplace. It was actually quite impressive because it must have taken him a lot of detective work to come to that conclusion but now that I knew the truth and all my questions had been answered, I had no use for him anymore. So I disconnected the call once he was done talking and blocked that number as well. It was a really mean thing to do but I don't care, what he did to me was far worse than this pettiness so now, I have a free pass for everything. Update 2. I finally reached out to Scott's parents and I told them that I was ready to accept their offer because I really felt like I deserved it. I also told them about Scott's homelessness and they told me that they were ready to help him out, as soon as he came to his senses and apologized to them. But if he couldn't own up to his mistakes then there's not much that they could do for him. And I agree with them, it's about time that he learns to clean up his own messes. He has been trying to contact me ever since I hung up on him the last time but that door is closed now. I hope he realizes that and stops wasting his own time because it's pretty embarrassing. Update 3. Hi, it's been a couple of weeks since the last update and I have officially moved into my new house. Scott's parents and my parents were all great help and I recently even hosted a housewarming party where everyone was invited, including my guests from the wedding because I wanted everyone to have a nice time since they had all been really gracious and helpful in the aftermath of the wedding fiasco. Everyone congratulated me because I seem to be doing a lot better than the last time they saw me and I really am. I feel a lot better now. As for Scott, I don't really know what he is up to. A couple of my friends told me after some online stalking that he has moved in with Caroline or at least that's what it looks like from his social media. Because he is definitely living in a woman's house, that's for sure, given the feminine decor and everything. But I don't care now, it doesn't matter to me. He can live wherever he wants to as long as it's far away from me.